I, I feel crazy. I shouldn't be surprised <laughs> that you and I don't agree on this, but I fucking, I am. You're listening to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers with your hosts Greg Barrett and Kane Holloway. Welcome to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers. I'm Kane Holloway. I'm Greg Hello. Barrett. Hello. 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 Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the best podcast you've ever heard in your fucking life. <laughs> If you like relationship talk, and you know they do, and general and general tomfoolery, then you're gonna love this podcast. Oh, the shenanigans that we get up to, my friends. Yeah, yeah, it's a brouhaha. <laughs> it sure is. It's a hoot nanny. Thanks for, oh. thanks for being us. Yeah, thanks for thanks for um, listening. Thanks for writing itunes reviews if you have and if you haven't hey do us a favor do us a solid write us some itunes reviews give us five stars tell us what you think of the show and how much you love us and how much you love pat because pat he's a he's a hoot nanny himself he's a one-man hoot nanny <laughs> mm. yeah yeah pat speaking of uh, i got uh let me see if i can find it here hang on yeah, I got a Venmo uh, payment for fifty dollars mm -hmm. from a fan of ours who also has a podcast that Kane and I have both been on. Yes, called the Art Podcast. Yes. Oh, Rebecca, it's Rebecca Evans, and she says, "For fuck's sake, get Pat a Christmas present." Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please get or order him a good eye regime. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. So yep. I did that this morning, and I went to Amazon, uh, and I got Pat Keel's Midnight Recovery Eye Concentrate. <laughs> All right. For, for unisex is what it says. Awesome. That's amazing. That should, be, that should be coming sometime in February, Pat. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much again. My my puffy, puffy eyes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get any listener gifts this year. No, <laughs> me neither. Yeah. Yeah, Pat had to drop that little nugget of, I don't have a family. <laughs> they don't give me stuff. <laughs> We see what yeah. you did there. This is just a ploy to get free gifts. You know what they call that on The Bachelor when you tell somebody a story like that? That's called a trauma dump. Trauma <laughs> dump. Yeah, and it and it is to elicit favor from the other player. Oh. Yes, yes. Let's have trauma. score points is by sharing some trauma. So Pat essentially is dating the listenership. Yes, he is. <laughs> Pat, you, you trauma, trauma dumped. dumped. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Trauma dumped mm -hmm. and scored mm -hmm. big. Oh yeah, you sure did. You went in to the Bachelor. You said, "Hey, can I talk to you for a second? And then you ratted out your entire friend and family base. They're they're not here for the right reasons. Uh, I, I I think that they're two faced. And guess what happened? You got a rose, my friend. You got a rose. <laughs> I am eternally grateful. Great. I can't wait to see your new slim eyes. I don't know what this stuff is supposed to do, but. It's supposed to smooth you out and get Ooh. rid of the wrinkles a little bit and de-puff oh. you. Pat's already pretty smooth, though. Pat's, Pat is a seal. <laughs> um, you're super sweet. So thank that's, you, Rebecca. you know, so my Venmo. And also, this is, you know, nobody sends me shit. Uh -huh. And then I get a fucking DM from somebody <laughs> saying, how can I go on a silent date with Kane? 
<laughs> Do I look like Kane's fucking mother? <laughs> My Kane's wingman? Yeah. How can I go on a silent date with Kane? They're trying to get on a silent date and they're DMing me. Yeah, well, I I know who you're talking about and 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 I'm not in favor of the silent date. Why do they think I'll help them? <laughs> I don't know. You yeah, you are you are barking up the wrong tree for sure. Pat, he's not going to help. He as much as Greg wants me to find somebody, the last thing he's going to do is put someone through the silent date. Even if they want to go on it, he's still not yeah. going to help you in that regard. I mean, if you if if you want to talk to Kane about books or something, yeah. But now I'm now Kane's Kane's DMs are sliding into mine. <laughs> oh no! And I am also eternally grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> That makes me happy on a level I didn't even know I could reach. That is just so fun. That's fun for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, look. I've uh, I, I should just state it now. Um, you know, for anybody interested, I'm not really dating. So uh, you know, I appreciate the DM. I'm pretty sure I made that clear to the listener. Um, I th- or at least I thought I made it clear. Apparently not, because she went to you. She went and tugged on your shirt. She virtually tugged on your shirt and said, "Excuse me, Mister. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me, Mister. How how can I how can I date this fella? <laughs> I'm not dating. So um, yeah, you can slide in all all you like, but I'm just not. Uh, uh, I, I I'm I'm more interested in just uh, you know career stuff right now, personal personal things and it's so funny that you bring that up because that's one of my questions that's one of the questions i got it a while ago and i like forgot about it um because it was like more personal but i never jumped on it so there was never i like you know put it out of my mind but one of the questions i got is actually uh on my instagram uh and i'm pretty sure that this uh she's a I'm, she's a listener and she i think she was trying to set me up with a friend because she said this is from hillary on my instagram she says hey kano which grabs my attention right away kano i love that uh i know you said you aren't dating now it's good to have a reflection period but i was curious when you start what are you looking for in a girlfriend or even just a date experience what type of girls are you into uh we all know you are the date guy so she'd have to have impressive improv skills lmfao (laughs) Asking for a friend, wink emoji. Um, I don't think she's asking for a friend. <laughs> well, in her profile picture, she's with a guy, so I don't think she. I don't think she is asking for herself. She may and be in a polyamorous you. relationship. You think? You think it's a poly it's thing? Like, I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna be the second guy. I'm gonna be the. The 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 the, the bo- maybe that's the husband, and I'm like the boyfriend or the boy toy. Ooh, yeah. the pool boy. Ooh, I'd love to be the pool boy. <laughs> that would be my but, favorite. Yeah, I mean, it's a good problem to have. A lot of people don't have the problem of people wanting to date them. That's true. It's a very nice thing. I really appreciate everybody, um, you know, hitting me up, shooting for the hoop, as it were, as it were or driving, driving, driving for the hoop. Um, as far as uh, what I'm into, I mean, I like to deny this as much as possible, but apparently I have a, I have a type <laughs> and ugh, blonde podcaster <laughs> try to, but I don't, as far as like dates are concerned, you know, I'm not, I'm not really too sure. Like with the, with the, I w- I'm not going to take anybody on just one of my curated dates. Like I'd have to like already go on a, a regular date with somebody. Like we go out and have dinner or coffee or some shit. And then we like click. Um, and then after like a couple of those normal dates, I'd be like, Hey, do you want to go into my bathtub and fill it up with a little like bath, one of those balls so we can pretend we're at a Chuck E. Cheese. And then we get, <laughs> and we get to that. Also, my producer is here. He's going to come out and scare us. He'll be covered yeah. in blood. <laughs> what do you think? 
you know, I have no, I have no, uh, I have no particulars on, I just, I like, I like somebody who can have fun. You know, a lot of the listeners who, who are straight up against my dates, I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't want to go on a regular date with you, you know, because it seems like you're a little more closed off. Um, I get accused of being weird. And I think I'm a, I, I think it's, I don't know. Uh, I've thought about this a little bit in the idea that I'm a weird person, which is true, but I need, I, ladies, you just need to understand all guys are fucking weird. All guys <laughs> want to do weird things. When I watch a community episode and Troy and Abed are making a pillow fort in the, in the school, all guys, it does not matter the age, want to be in a pillow fort. So maybe one of my date ideas would be, hey, let's get into a pillow fort. Let's make a pillow fort. I wouldn't actually do that because that's. This is the podcast where I leave. Why? <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking weird person, too. The, You're a weirdo. The pillow, the pillow fort uh -huh. is so <laughs> twee. <laughs> Pillow for it's actually I think I'm getting of the age where I don't want to bend over that much and be picking things up and like putting a, I don't think I, I I don't want to make a pillow for I would like to already like see that someone has made a pillow for it and then I'll fucking then I'll rock and roll in there and around the the pillow for it. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is is that uh, you know all guys are fucking weird and like and will like weird things and like to feel like you want to be a part of it. And I guess that's what I'd be looking for in a day to someone who's just willing to go along with my weirdness, you know, someone right. who's just a, a more open to my weird oddball ideas. Cause I, this is, this is what I'm like. And I talk a lot. And so, you know, and like, uh, so a weird idea for a guy to talk a lot is to, to go on a date where we don't talk at all. I'm not saying I'd even be good at it, you know? Uh, but it's just like, that's just my sensibility. So anybody who uh, has a, a great sense of humor that also likes to go do weird shit and be fun and funny and spontaneous. I can't, I would, I can't wait to date somebody like that. I think that would be, that would be great. Anybody who's super rigid and like, anybody's like, Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's not really my speed. All right. Well, this might, that probably will be our last date. So that's pretty okay. much all, you know, all I'm looking for. Now you're going to get DMs from people who, like, you've just literally asked for DMs. <laughs> <laughs> you just told people what you're looking for. So people are going to write you and go, look, I, I love your silent. I mean, this girl that hit me up likes the silent date. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh. But yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not in the, I'm not in the date, I'm not in the date space, you know, I'm more of like, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get back to California, you know, like I've, I've, I've done shows and sort of like run into and met girls at shows and, and I've had to sort of recuse myself from <clears throat> any like, like furthering anything I think with them because I'm leaving, like I'm leaving and I don't want to start a long distance thing with anybody like over Instagram who lives somewhere else because um, I don't, I don't want to do that. And so my focus has been like work and moving and, and all that shit. And so I really have yet to have a headspace for myself to figure out like when I would start dating and who I'd want to start dating, but it gives me a lot to think about. And uh, yeah. And I just, I really just want to have fun. I don't want to go. I, I haven't really had a date yet where it's been awful. Like I've never, I haven't been, I've been on a few and I haven't really been on one have been kind of boring or whatever. And I know I've been boring <clears throat> cause I'm just like not really into it, but I've never had one where, you know, you like, I've never had a dating horror story where I'm just like, Jesus Christ, that was, that was awful. I hope I never see that person again. Really? I have. No, I haven't had that yet. Yeah. You know, I had to carry a girl home, put her to bed. Oh, really? Oh my god, she got wasted. <laughs> and I and this was when I was brand new sober. Oh yeah. Brand new sober. And so she was like, I think she drank more because I didn't. 
Mm -hmm. Like she drank hers and mine. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and she just got wasted. I mean, like just so wasted. Yeah. I mean, it That's... wasn't a nightmare. It was fine, but it mm -hmm. was like bad. It was bad. And I had some boring dates. I had I had dates where girls cried. I'm oh, not really? easy to date. <laughs> what? <do> you, <laughs> why? What are you like fucking criticizing them on the, at the table? No. <laughs> no. If you want to, that's the other thing I get a lot because I don't drink. And usually when I go on dates with women, I get a multitude of questions. And one of the big questions is, is it okay if I drink? Absolutely. Yes. Go ahead. Drink all you want. I don't mind being around it. I, I just won't. And that gets into people's heads. I've had women be like, I don't know. Like after we've hooked up, they've, they've then said like, oh, I don't, I didn't know how that was going to go because I felt every time I go to hook up with a guy, you were usually buzzed and our inhibitions are lowered and so like i don't know what to do with a guy like you and i'm like we can still hook up you know like we'll just remember it and uh, <laughs> well you will yeah i'll remember it for sure but drink all drink all you want now if you're gonna like be fall over and sloppy drunk on date one or two um yeah i probably uh, won't be going asking you out again uh no no judgment i just don't want to i just wouldn't want to deal with that so but you know if you want to, if you want to drink, please be my guest. If you want to ask me questions about my not drinking? Feel free. I'm an open book as far as I'm concerned. So uh, that's that's a thing. That's a, that's a, I guess like a parameter of dating that I'm going into, just so everyone's aware. Well, I'm pretty clear. Yeah, you want you want to go out? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm the right guy. I don't think I'm the right guy for you. <laughs> Are you going to make me cry at the table? Don't feel tight. <laughs> Carry you to your room. <laughs> I would love to see that. I literally um, had to pick her up like a fireman carry. Like like this? Throw her over my shoulder. Really? Yeah. Wow. I put her to bed with all her clothes on. I didn't take her clothes off or anything. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have either. Oof. Yikes. Well, at least you didn't apple dump her, and that's that's and that's commendable. No, I didn't drop her off at an Applebee's. <laughs> I should have though. <laughs> Imagine coming to at an Applebee's. Yes, I've done that. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? Okay. Uh, here's some inspirational stuff. All of mine are Wait, from... Do people know where they can send us memes? I don't know. That's a good question, Greg. They can send it to dtbffpodcast at gmail.com or dtbffpodcast on Instagram. Yeah, or they, or they can post them on our Discord. We have a section just for that. Oh, that's also true. That's also true. Uh, go to the Discord where you can meet up and talk to specifically people who all listen to and love this show. And uh, the Discord is a fun place. So, yeah, go go send them all there. Uh, I got some. This one, all of mine come from Crazy Bitch Probs, which is a fun follow. First one here is blocking him is not enough. I need to talk to his mom in detail about what he did. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that one. 
Um, why do people ask you, how was work? As if you're going to turn around and be like, it was great. Thanks for asking. Mate, I barely made it through the day without knocking someone out. Okay. All right. And that's just to let everyone know, hey, if you're struggling at your day-to-day -day work, don't take bullshit from fuckers, but also don't knock anybody out. Don't no. knock anybody out. Uh, you can... No, you can that. Yeah, don't come at them with a rolling pin. <laughs> that's not in the show. <laughs> Pat. Uh, this last one, I'm 44 and I can't swim. Stay your age in something you can't do. Uh, this guy says, I'm 20 and I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's dark. That is pretty dark. That's pretty dark. I'm 35. I go through bouts of not being able to take it anymore. Do you? Yeah. You know, some I days. Take it. I can take it. Yeah. I mean, it's been a while since I've not been able to take it anymore. But uh, I went through a moment there. I went through, uh, I think it was probably last year. I was like, I don't think I can take this anymore. Yeah. I don't, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have. What do you have, Greg? Mine's terrible. <laughs> Here it is. Crazy how I shifted the focus to myself and I'm attracting everything I wanted. Your mind is powerful. Learn how to use it to its fullest extent. Oh. Yikes. I'm getting everything I ever wanted. I don't believe you. No. <laughs> Nobody does. I shifted the focus to myself. I don't think you're supposed to shift the focus to yourself. When you shift, you're sp you're supposed to have a nice balance of the of the two. You want to focus on you, and you also want to focus on those that are important to you. Yeah. You know? The inward self-focus, the 100% self-focus leads to unhappiness because, you know, you're going towards things you think are going to make you happy. You know, look at the rich. Most rich people are very unhappy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, have a, have a balance of the two. I don't like that either. Yeah. Yes, I, I don't know what it was about this that I liked in the moment. Again, this is one of those things where I read something, I go, that's kind of cool. And then I take a photo of it, and now it's stuck on my phone, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to read it, and I hate it. <laughs> crazy how I, I hate that it starts with crazy. It's you such an asshole crazy? thing to say. Crazy how I, uh, it's kind of crazy how I just sort of shifted the focus to myself, and I'm getting uh -huh. everything I ever wanted. What really? Everything, everything, everything you've ever, I've ever wanted. Really? Yeah, your mind is powerful. Learn how to use it to its fullest extent. Oh my God, I never would have thought to do that. Did yeah, you know bro, that? bro. You know what? Dude, bro, you know what's crazy? crazy, bro? It's you know crazy, what? bro. Oh my how God, I shifted the focus. My mind is blowing up right now as you're talking. What else? Yeah, dude. Dude, I'm just telling you, man. Learn how to use it to its fullest extent, dude. I only use Blow ten percent. Ah, oh, God, I only use 10% of my brain. I should be using my brain to its full limitless possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll get everything I want. I'm getting everything I want. Everything? I'm attracting everything I ever wanted. Really? You still yeah. owe me $100. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, that one's so fucking dumb. I hate it. Pat, what do you got? Well, luckily, I don't feel constrained by the uh, desire to make sure that they're good. I just pick a bunch. So, I love it. <laughs> we've got, why be moody when you can shake your booty? You fired, Pat. <laughs> hey, man. He, the, why be moody, Greg? When in all actuality, you could be getting up and shaking that booty. Terrible. Why be moody? I've uh -huh. also got, 
and this is no better, an arrow can only be released by pulling it back. Shut the fuck up. Before you finish, no, stop talking. (laughs) Stop talking. Hold the fuck on. Wait. Say it again? No. (laughs) No. No. I hate it before it begins. Because... And the, anything that starts off with, yo, an arrow can fuck. You, we know it. I know, already know it's. I already know where it's going. Go ahead, finish it. I already know. <laughs> an arrow can only be released by first pulling it back. When life pulls you back, it simply means you're launching into something amazing. Boo! <laughs> Boo! Boo! Shut up, meme. Shut the fuck up. For for guys that pretend to help people, we hate self-help. We hate it so much. The concept of you look, you're all there's gonna be days you feel down. And then there's gonna be days that you you won't feel down and you'll feel inspired and you'll wanna get things done. And then, and then you'll, you'll get a bunch of things done and you'll feel great and you'll be like, fuck, I am on top of the world. And then one day hits and you just can't get yourself out of bed and you're like, shit, I suck. And you're going to loop like that for the rest of your fucking life. But I hate shit that says, look, there's going to be one moment in your whole life that's going to treat you like an arrow and it's going to feel like someone's pulling you back by your asshole, but eventually they're just going to launch you. Into the stratosphere. Shut the fuck up. Everyone is going to have disparate levels of success based on their own hard work. You just, again, you want a fucking nice balance in your life. Yeah. God. Arrow thing bothers me. None of these quotes involve skincare, so I don't trust them. <laughs> I know. Yo, you got puffy skincare eyes. skincare really is the key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which you can get it enough already, right? We sell we sell skincare products. No. <laughs> well then what are we doing? How do we not have skincare products at enough already? We don't sell skincare products. Well, what about we hey coffee face? Them. We use them. What? Sure. What about hey coffee face? Oh fuck, I forgot about that. <laughs> My own skincare line. Yeah. I got a Except beard it's brush. A different store. It's a whole other store. Oh, really? So, hey, Coffee Face is d- disconnected from enough already? Yeah, it's its own, it's its own storefront. It's right. It's, it's at the mall next to the Pouch and Hammer. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Pouch and Hammer, man. This is, look. I know we missed you around Christmas time and we should have been promoting back then, but if you got a Harry downstairs, well, we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you figured out. We'll get you cut nice at the pouch and hammer. Yeah. We'll get that ancillary stem hair. (laughs) (laughs) We'll get you a nice military cut. And (laughs) when you stand at attention, you'll look professional. Oh my God, that was off the cuff. <laughs> Holy shit, that's amazing. Speaking of enough already, uh, if we were to ever have a food truck outside our store where you can only get a cup of coffee, uh, one style of haircut, and some chinos. Yeah, pair of and khakis. Pair of khaki pants. That's all we sell at enough already. You Not want any- fun. No, no, please. Nope. Yeah. So if you come into the store, that's what you're getting. Our our clothing pant line is called Cat Hair and Gravy. Um, this is just how it works out at our store. When you go outside, this food truck needs to be out there. So hopefully, you know, we could we could contact them and they'll be outside. This is a fucking picture of a food truck that says one dollar grilled cheese. No change given. Sort out your own shit. <laughs> no awesome. change. So if you only have a fiver, you have to go. You have to go get a dollar from somebody. 
Uh, and they have a bunch of signs on their shit. Their menu is grilled cheese, $1. That's all they sell. And it says, that's enough. If you need a drink, go to a place that sells drinks. Well, guess what? We got coffee and enough already. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. You got to leave your grilled cheese outside, now. though. We do have half an hour. <laughs> Can't bring your grilled cheese inside. We don't want the smell in the store. But uh, so buy your sandwich, leave it outside. Go in, get a coffee, come back outside, eat your grilled cheese and coffee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, danger, a dollar grilled cheese. Don't ask for a goddamn tomato slice, or I swear to God, I will reach through the window pull you inside and hold your head against the griddle, which will be embarrassing for you. Cash yeah, only. Cash only. I don't have Venmo because I'm not some teenage asshole who vapes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dog. I love it. That was sent in by Geekiana. Geekiana. Bravo, Geekiana. Very, very good. Also sent to the Discord are... Date ideas written by our listeners. And Pat has them. Uh, I have yet to hear these, so I can't wait. All right, we'll start it out simple. This is from Daria. Don't know if anybody has suggested this yet, but date idea. Make a sandwich. That's, that's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. It's unclear who makes the sandwich. I assume you do it together. Do you make one sandwich for the two of you? Like, <laughs> is this where I this think it actually be? I think we should simplify it and make it like cup, where uh -huh. you just walk in and there's a sandwich there, <laughs> just one. But it's make us. But it's make a sandwich. <laughs> I want to just change it to sandwich. <laughs> okay, so I have a bunch of questions then. Uh, do you eat this sandwich? Do you cut you the sandwich? It, it's, the date will unfold. We'll see. Do I it's tell? Not cut, it's not cut in half either. Right, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. This is how. Okay, this is a great relationship barometer this is what I, i'm looking for in a woman i'm gonna i would give her the knife and based on how she cuts the sandwich i'll know she's for me right <laughs> so if she cuts it down the middle that's my girl but if she cuts it fucking in half like that diagonal lengthwise type way where there's like fucking sandwich corners and it looks like a triangle that girl's a psychopath so yeah, I'm the complete opposite. You're the opposite. Yeah, you cut corner to corner. You're that's not down weird. the middle. You're the that's fucking a baby. That's a baby sandwich. What are you talking about? That's <laughs> it's perfect. That's, that's you a, stuck in. That's you stuck in a fucking pillow fort. No <laughs> fucking mommy, way. Mommy's eating mommy's PB and J that she cut down the middle and cut the crust off for you. You no. goddamn baby. You are dating. <laughs> no, oh my you, god. You and Amira are psychopaths. You're you natural born killers. Dave Eggers. No, you you, in a, you, you're like where the wild things are. You're a sociopath. You're a, you're a zoomer. You kill people for a living. <laughs> Everybody loves the triangle. No one loves Everybody the loves triangle, Greg. Middle. Crazy people, insane sociopaths with no empathy in their hearts. <laughs> Cut their fucking. Diagonal corner to corner sandwiches. People with joy and 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 whimsy. Middle. No, it's a yeah. baby sandwich. That's not a baby <laughs> sandwich. A That's not a fucking baby sandwich. That's how they do it at Subway and Quiznos and Jersey Mike's. Those are subs, you dummy. I know they're you subs, but that's what I'm saying. They you cut, only cut a sub one way. No, no, you, you can, can only cut it cut a sub one way. No, it's not true. Yes, it is true. I think this, I think this is, this is, this is insane. And I feel, I, I feel crazy because it's, I've been validated by many people when I've talked about this, how to cut a sandwich thing. I shouldn't babies. be, other I babies. Should, 
No, I shouldn't be surprised. Absolutely not. I shouldn't be surprised that you and I don't agree on this. But I fucking I am. Like, okay, like with the pillow thing and 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 the fucking toilet paper, I'm I'm enraged by you whenever you fucking say your thing and how you don't care especially about the toilet paper you don't care that it's under what why do you like your life to be hard on purpose gregors i don't get it but the sandwich thing how the fuck are we even arguing about this first off first off i've been alive for 58 years i've never struggled with toilet paper i've never struggled, <laughs> yes, I've never struggled with it you are a liar i've never struggled with it i mean i've been I've been some places where it's out, where you only have a couple of pieces, but At I've never home. struggled with toilet paper getting it off the roll. Yes, you have. Ever. I know you have. Including Zero. those gigantic rolls that they have in public bathrooms. The uh -huh. gigantic one. Yes. Which is under. Yeah. And that's a nightmare. I hate taking a public shit because they're almost always under because the yeah, custodians. are doing. The, no, the custodians don't give a shit it's how the they public, do it. For the general public. The general public likes it over. I think we've already established that. The general public enjoys an over. It's right there. It's hanging. It's in your face. Snap. You cut off a couple of squares. Swap, swap, swap. You're good to go. Then you can go wash your hands. Right. Then your mom wipes your ass. And then you no, go. No. Back to your tree fort. Absolutely not. Back to your pillow fort. Listen, and you have, your little, no. you have your little crustless sandwich. I, don't, I like crust. I don't want them to cut the crust off. I enjoy a crust. I think that's psychotic. You're a fucking Dexter Morgan over here cutting your sandwiches to the corners. It's classic. You cl you've killed somebody before in your life. Old school. Anytime you go anywhere, that's how they cut a grilled cheese. I bet you like Miracle Whip. No, I don't. Oh. I'm a craft guy. Okay, because uh, we would have gone to blows. I would have come to California to fight you. <laughs> I've never eaten Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is disgusting. I will not entertain an argument about how it's good. You cannot convince me. <laughs> Poor Daria, look what she's done. With her <laughs> date idea. Sandwich fucked this up. <laughs> Sandwich. All right. We also have one here from Demi Peanut. Date idea. Go to Trader Joe's and stare at the peeled baby carrots. Have your date open each package and organize them all by color. If he or she fucks them up, scream, fuck your mama with the LA Raiders. Disclaimer, this is loosely based on real events. V this happened? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this was a date or this was like somebody went in uh, and... I'm assuming this happened to Demi Peanut, who seems like a nice young lady. And uh, <laughs> fuck, fuck your mama. What? With the L.A. Raiders. Fuck your mama with the L.A. Raiders. Uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna opt out of that date idea. I'm gonna <laughs> not do that one. We also have uh, from Nick's. How about the Benjamin Button date? You both start off dressed in too many layers of wool and tweed, discussing topics like the youth of today and how much harder things were when you were growing up, with dinner comprising of only soft foods, and then gradually remove layers, discuss how hard adulting is, go through a brief emo phase where you sit in awkward silence, and finally progress to finger painting butt naked on the walls. So, Nix, <laughs> it's, it's possible that you need to... To seek some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even I didn't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> like the start out with a bunch of clothes on. No, I can't. I can't do it. Eating applesauce. I don't think I can do it. Yeah. I mean, Benjamin yeah. Buttons is such a terrible movie. I didn't even see it. Everybody tells and anytime somebody goes, Have you seen Benjamin Buttons? I know I'm somebody I don't know. I don't understand how you could like it. It looked the trailers look terrible. So I and I don't want to put myself through that. It's like it's too long and I don't think I'd care. Yeah. Is that Fincher? I think it is Fincher. Yeah, it is. 
It's it's the one they don't talk about. <laughs> and then uh, lastly, we got one from Denonymous. The Animal Noises Day. Spend the day together and only communicate using noises that animals make. Meowing, barking, woofing, quacking, growling, peeping, squeaking, etc. Whatever you need to successfully communicate and navigate the challenges that this date will present. We should start a rumor that people, that this is something that Zoomers are doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that this whole website's dedicated to it. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. And the a Reddit is... feed where people bark in the Reddit feed. Oh, God, that'd be great. Woof, woof. <laughs> I was going to say that Denonymous, I guarantee you there's dates going on where there's people barking and meowing at each other. For sure. Or at least that's how okay, it is. Okay, yeah, people are making animal yeah. noises. People are dressing up like bunnies and fucking each other. <laughs> yeah. I got to do a whole thing. Yeah, there is a. I found out about um, furries from a guy in my Lyft. Like when I used to drive for Lyft, a guy got in the front seat, like he made it a, made it a thing to like get in my front seat, and then sat down, and then asked me if I was a furry first, and then asked. I said I don't know what that is, and he goes, "Oh wow, boy," because we had like twenty minutes of a drive, and then sat there and showed me pictures of people dressing up as furries, and I go, "Do you guys what it?" Like, what is this? And it's like, well, it's like a, you know, like it's a, a thing kind of like Comic-Con. And I go, does it ever devolve into you guys having sex with each? It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> people, people fuck like frogs and they fuck frogs. It's uh, I can't get into it. Yeah, I can't get into it. <laughs> but I guess also you're supposed to make noises like you are that animal. Right. Yes. And it was, also, there's pet play where people will pretend to be cats or dogs or bunnies or whatever while they fuck. So this is happening for sure. I've, dude, yeah, I saw. Yeah, I saw a thing like on on fucking it was some like news thing where some girl was like being led around the neck and pretending to be a dog, but she was dressed in lingerie. And you're like, oh, she looks hot, but this is that's fucking so bizarre. That's like so funny. We dress our dogs in lingerie. <laughs> Those poor dogs. You get them to try to. Yeah, speak it's English. really hard to get the garter belt on. <laughs> you have to get it's hard six to get them to sit, to sit still during it. You have to get six nipple clamps. Get it? Yes, I understand. <laughs> Thank you. I do get it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that date already exists. Well, yeah, hey, keep them coming. Uh, we appreciate the date ideas. Um, I need, I'm going to need some more. Uh, I need some more ideas for when I eventually get out into the dating world, you know? So uh, keep them coming. We really appreciate it. Sandwich, another point of contention for the show. We'll be right back. We're not a bachelor podcast. I just want to not say right off the bat. We're not a bachelor. No, podcast. and in fact, our podcast comes out the day after a new one yeah. has arrived. So the pod so the bachelor we're talking about is already a week old. Right. So whatever drama has unfolded in in episode three, we have yet to watch it, but I feel compelled to talk about how how much fun I was having at the start of the episode to then having absolutely no fun because of how shitty these women were being <laughs> to each other. Oh, yeah. I was having a great time. We start the episode with Hillary Duff and then we end the episode with a woman braiding another woman for having ADHD. And it stopped mm -hmm. being fun. And it became like very visceral. Like you were like, 
actively watching someone get bullied and you couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Like you that couldn't woman, believe it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There there are two villains on the Bachelorette already. They're already full-blown villains and it's only yeah. one episode in really. I mean, the first episode doesn't really count cuz it's just when everyone arrives. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, one of the women, what's her name? Uh Cassidy. I th yeah, Cassidy, I think. Cassidy's the one that had the fuck buddy before she came to The Bachelor. Right. And she outed herself about it. Not that you yes. can't have a fuck buddy. You can have a, fuck buddy. have a fuck buddy. Hey. Well, I don't. Have, I actually don't have a fuck buddy. I don't have a fuck buddy either. Pat? <laughs> nope. <laughs> we'll get you there, buddy. Pat, you got to get a fuck buddy. Get a fuck buddy. <laughs> Stop it. We'll probably probably somebody will write us and say, "Hey, get Pat a fuck buddy." <laughs> they'll they'll send us a thousand dollars on Venmo. Here's a thousand dollars. Get Pat a fuck buddy somehow. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah, Cassidy goes full blown full blown villain and decides I'm just gonna make out uh, with Clayton and talk to Hillary Duff instead of helping with any aspect of this. And then, of course, that works on Clayton because Clayton is, can only see with his, I think, his dick right now. I think he can only All see All he can see dick. is what's in front of him? Yes. You can say anything to Clayton and he'll believe it? Absolutely believe it without, unequivocally. He's a full-blown idiot. Yeah. <laughs> he he, he says, seems like he's probably... A, he seems like he's probably... Uh, a nice guy. Yeah, he seems very nice. He seems like he's probably a nice man, mm -hmm. but he's an idiot. He's so dumb, and he says words wrong. And he, there's my favorite. One of my favorite moments is this on on a one on one date. This woman is talking about um, how her father is, was in the ICU, and she was inspired by how her mom would like sit with him and just like sleep next to him. And like the great love that she in the hospital feel in the hospital while he was suffering and going through his thing, and she wants that in a person. And then it cuts to him. And there's a beat of silence, and he goes, "Yeah." And then, <laughs> and then, and then tries to, and then doesn't share anything that's like sort of similar or has like a has like a, a deep thought about what that means. For him he says some like sort of just like generic nonsense about how like well i like how you can see the light through the darkness or some bullshit like that and you're like oh, oh exactly. my god you fucking thick idiot oh <laughs> it's like he wasn't even listening to her talk it was like he's like his eyes are down they kind of glazed over while she's like telling this pretty personal story <laughs> so they, really they leave it in a cliffhanger whether Clayton's gonna throw so one of the one of the bachelorettes tattles on Cassidy and tells Clayton that she's got a guy on the side. Mm -hmm. And then we see Clayton say, Can you take a rose back? Because he's already given her a rose. And uh and so we don't know whether she's been kicked off the show. However, she released a video yesterday where she said essentially she said exactly. Fuck you, Clayton Neckhart. Then she had to delete it because she gave away the ending of the show. Yo, really? I did not know that. Yeah, look that That's up. That's crazy. She has a whole tirade where she's swearing. She seems drunk. Oh, good. Oh, good. I think she was drunk at the... at the. Uh... Yeah, I think they fucking allow these girls to drink. Yeah, and just get sloshed. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. she's a lot more calculating in her in her decisions, and she's very willing to look like an asshole. But then there's Shanene, who is um, so unsure of herself, but gets overpowered by uh, Cassidy, and so and takes Cassidy's um, idea of trying to go for Clayton in a more strong-willed way. That she's like, it's no longer just Shanae. I'm Shanene. 
Shanene is coming out. And Shanene is a horrible person and is just and is jealous if any girl is talking to Clayton, uh, if he if they're sitting next to him. And this one woman, Elizabeth, who, you know, I mean, she's cut very well. She's the way they edit her. It's very, very good. But uh, she it, cut or uncut. She just seems to like have a general sense of herself and know how to like um, try to, to like understand someone when they're talking. She's an adult. Like she is confronted by Shanae over some bullshit Shanae is coming up with to start drama. And then she's like, you weren't paying attention to me. You weren't even looking at me while I'm talking. And while we were in a group and Elizabeth confides in her by saying, I have ADHD. And so, and it's like I, my whole life and it's been really intense. So I have a hard time focusing on a lot of things going on. And that's probably why it felt, and it perfectly understandable uh, thing to, to, to like go, Oh, okay. So that's what that was. But Shanae, uh, uh, doesn't take it seriously. Doesn't understand that when someone shares something like that, it's a very personal thing. And then decides to just go around the house telling people she's got ADHD and fucking trashing her for it. It's insane. Yeah, she yeah. ends one segment by saying ADHD bullshit. Yeah, my ass. And then the next day she says she has it herself. I have ADHD and 12-year-olds have ADHD. Put unstable people on the show. Wow. It was insane to watch. Yeah. I because like right before this, Elizabeth had said she wanted to play Have I Never Have I Ever with Clayton. And it you find out that she used to be a freestyle rapper, a low-key free, freestyle rapper in college, which I got super excited about because I've noticed a fucking trend going on in Bachelor Nation where people who can't freestyle rap or beatbox will beatbox and freestyle rap for each other and it's awful and embarrassing and i love it every time i see it and i got so excited at the thought that i was going to watch clayton beatbox and elizabeth freestyle rap and i would cringe and laugh and make fun of it and then this fucking shanene comes in and ruins it she fucking yeah. ruined my good time plus shanene the name is racist is it? I did not know that. Well, Janene was a character that Martin Lawrence used to play of a poor black woman. On Martin? That's right. Oh, I forgot all about that. Yeah, so it's kind of a like, you'd mm -hmm. want to stay away from saying you're Shanene. Yeah. Yeah. And if you refer to yourself as Shanene, you, you need to get kicked off the show. <laughs> you have to get kicked off the show. God. I mean, like, so could not be more short sighted. This woman is so involved in herself that she can't see she's being a complete piece of shit. Yeah, dude, it's that's crazy. It's like I couldn't believe she kept going. Yeah. As well. it, yeah. So I I am intrigued, to, to say the least. I'm actually I, I haven't been excited for Bachelor stuff until that happened and now i'm i really need to see shanene get her fucking comeuppance yeah yes yeah, is a good season yeah it's not bad so far <laughs> um so over on our discord man we're plugging the discord pretty hard today but you know, know you and place. i should actually go over there yeah <laughs> Um, over the Discord, we've had uh, Pat asked the listeners out of classic movie and TV duos, who does Kane and Greg remind you the most of? And we got some we got some people that told us who they think we are as movie duos. Exactly. I, I basically asked if you could compare Greg and Kane to another famous duo from any medium, who would they be and why? And I gave us an example. Uh, let's say Batman and Robin. That one's easy. Greg is clearly Bats and Kane is the boy wonder. Okay. And I asked for a few suggestions. And uh, Triptition sent in Pinky in the Brain. Kane and all his crazy date ideas and his characters like a little squirt squirt make him Pinky. In oh. all the aforementioned chaos and hilarity of Kane, 
just simply the way Gregor stares at Kane makes him brain. And besides, <laughs> and besides, Greg's Gre and besides, Greg has that we're gonna take over the world one Venmo at a time vibe. <laughs> one Venmo at a time, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. Pinky in the brain. Sure. Okay. I can see it. And then the Alan brand says, Greg is Murtaugh and Kane is Riggs from lethal weapon. Kane is a wild card who flies by the seat of his pants. Insane person, clearly right. emotionally and physically broken by his past relationships. And okay. Greg is getting too old for this shit, but also feels the urge to try and keep up with Kane and all his youthful idiocy to feel young and alive. That's super accurate. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Super accurate. I'm gonna karate like I'm gonna have a karate fight with Gary Busey on Christmas. <laughs> and then years from now, years from now you're gonna get really drunk and fight no. with your wife and <laughs> no. spew racist bullshit. No. I was more thinking about the rigs part of it and not the actors who betrayed him. And then you're going to get pulled over by the cops and talk no. to them about the No. No. No, 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 no. Uh, I like the more fun-loving, crazy rigs than the drunken sociopath, <laughs> Mel Gibson. God damn. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. That's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. Um Let's ask the audience if they want to send in some more. Like, go yeah, on. yeah. Who else do you think we are? Who else? Like, what? What other classic duos? I, uh, yeah. Um, like, maybe we're a couple of Ghostbusters. I'm Pete Bankman. You're clearly Harold Ramis, and Pat is Dan Aykroyd. Oh no! <laughs> I don't. I don't think anybody approves of that casting. <laughs> I'm Bill Murray. How are you, Bill Murray? I'm clearly Bill Murray. Classic, smart, funny, old. Yeah, that's well, they're all old yeah. now. Who am I, Slimer? Ass? You're the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. <laughs> you're just banging through the city, not knowing what you're doing. <laughs> uh, actually, that's not bad. That's not that's not that bad. That's not that bad. Yeah, all right. We get this guy laid, we won't have any trouble. <laughs> Reddit remix. Fiance wants to put our engagement on hold after learning. Uh, I got back into gymnastics and thinking I'm not straight. What? Okay. Fiance wants to put our wedding on hold because I attended an adult gymnastics class and because guys who do gymnastics are usually feminine. She knew I did it in high school, but said it was different back then because no one knows what they want to be yet. However, she said that I'm possibly not straight and never had a chance to explore such feelings due to my religious upbringing and possible fear of being reprimanded. Thus, why she wants to put the wedding on hold. She just wants to break up with you. <laughs> She's an idiot. She's an asshole. Yeah, she's a fucking asshole. You're lucky. You missed a bullet. Yeah. Dude, are you yeah, are you engaged to Shanene? This fucking <laughs> what a piece of shit thing to say. What what the fuck? It's she's she's manifesting a, a ridiculous reason so she doesn't marry you. It's so dumb. And why the fuck would you do that to why would why would why would you do that? Why would you think that that was okay? Hey, you're gay. You're obviously gay. And we should just put this on hold because you you have unrequited gay feelings that you have yet to really come to terms with. So let's just put it on hold. Put it on hold. But so okay, so then you put the wedding on hold and then he goes out and has some sexual experiences with men and then what? You're supposed to get fucking kick it back into gear and get married again? What? What's the fucking plan, stupid? But who even says he wants to have sexual experiences with men? Right. He wants to be a gymnast. Yeah, exactly. He wants to get gymnast into a sport. Gymnast is badass. That's a hard... Gymnastics is hard. 
it takes the utmost strength to be able to do that mental and physical strength to be a gymnast it's in, it's intense wow yeah. what a short-sighted asshole <laughs> holy shit yeah totally yeah no yeah good for run, you buddy you lucked out what an intolerant yeah. shit yeah god damn and it's under the veil of like, oh, no, I am being very tolerant. I'm like understanding who you are. Bitch, I'm saying out loud who I am. Okay. <laughs> I like gymnastics. I also like to have sex with women and engage with women. I don't. Why do I have to be gay? You. That is insane. Ugh. <laughs> Sometimes when yeah, you have like, people. you have like a people sense of people. Exactly. Yeah. You have a fucking sense about people and then I'll, and then they do this shit. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Walk away, buddy. Yeah. Walk Deuces. away. Well, that's our show. And that is our show. It was a good one. Um, yeah. Let us know how you feel. Uh, what's going on in your life? If you're taking bullshit from fuckers, email it into to our show. If uh, you have some uh, relationship advice questions, Maybe some uplifting stuff, like you met somebody and you're infatuated and things are going great. We like to hear about that stuff too. Yeah. Uh, how do you, if you have your... a trauma dump that you, you want a... mm -hmm. to load onto us to get us <laughs> on your side? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Feel free mm -hmm. to trauma dump. Feel free to trauma you dump. Christmas, you might get a Christmas present out of it. <laughs> you might. You never know. You want to send Pat some gifts? <laughs> you can Venmo Greg at Greg Parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Greg. Yeah, if you want to send Pat something, send me the money. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll mm -hmm. take care of it. Mm -hmm. I spent almost exactly fifty dollars. Wow. Yeah. What a cool gift. Yeah, facial care is not is not inexpensive. Mm -mm. Um, if you want to tell us how you cut your sandwiches, <laughs> DTBF. Oh, yeah. DTBFF podcast at gmail.com or on Instagram, DTBFF podcast. Uh, this episode comes out the 18th. So I would like to invite everybody in the Seattle Tacoma area that if you guys would like to come out to Kane Holloway and Friends, it's a show I have with a lineup of comics I think are very, very funny and good friends of mine. So if you'd like to come to that, it's a 430 show. Tickets are at TacomaComedyClub.com or you can go to KaneHolloway.com for more information about that. I have some other shows coming up, so it'll all be on my website. Um, and if you would like to support the show, Patreon.com backslash DTBFF podcast. Greg, do you have anything coming up? Uh, I do have some gigs coming up. I'll mention them next week. Cool fantastic also i'll be in town i'll be in la next week or coming up i'm coming to la and so yeah. and i'll let you guys know when i'm coming to la and uh i got some shows out in la so all of our california listeners that want to come to a cali show i'll be at the improv and all kinds of stuff again kaneholloway.com follow me at kane holloway oh follow me at it's gregor's i'm at dtbff producer pat you can also call in the show pat what's that number that number is 323-379-5544. Uh, and also, if you are struggling with dating, um, Amira and I are now coaching together. And uh, <clears throat> we'll take care of you. If you're yep. in the struggle, if you're tired of swipe, 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 if you're, if you're just a person who needs to feel better about dating, or maybe you don't date at all and you want to, hit me up. Mm-hmm. Hit me up hit me up in the DM. Let's get something started. Let's have a little 15 minute phone call to talk about it. Hell yeah. And uh, of course, don't take bullshit from fuckers. Fuck them. Hey there. If you like the show, you can find bonus episodes and more at our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast. And then rate the show five stars on iTunes because it's the right thing to do. All music by the Rating Monarchs, produced by Patrick Kelly. Hey.